Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the April Astrology Outlook 2023. So this is the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of April. Now if you don't know your sidereal Vedic signs then click on a link below you will be able to find out what those are. You might find that they are a little bit different to your western astrology signs. Sometimes you are you know a sign behind. Sometimes you're the same. It just depends. I want to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoy the content here. There's lots of variety on the channel. So take a look at the different playlists, see what's there. I hope you find something that interests you. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the news for the month of March. Then we're going to see what's coming up in April. I'll talk you through some of the big planetary shifts that are happening in April and how I see that playing out for the collective. We'll do that first and then what I'll do is in the mini reports I will cover how these shifts are going to affect you personally. So those of you who like to stick around for my introduction you can stick around otherwise you're very welcome to just use the jump links and click straight into the content that you want to see. But let's take a look at the news in brief for the month of March. What have we had going on? It has been a pretty jam-packed month, hasn't it? it? There's been a lot going on. And I do think that some of the, the planetary movements that we have happening here, I've got, yes, quite a few notes on the banking uh, collapses and all that kind of thing. So, so what is it that I'm seeing here? Well, Sun has been with Saturn across the month of March. If we see the Sun as being our wealth and our safety, we can read the Sun in that way. But you know, the Sun is that infinite, eternal, burning life force. Very often it Present, represents money. You know, when you think of a Leo, right? Leo is lauded by the sun. Who do you think of? What kind of character do you think of? You generally think of someone who is wealthy, confident, you know, uh, sun can definitely represent money. Uh, the other thing about Leo, fifth house, sometimes people are quite infinite in their spending you know they just they, they burn the cash it just burns it's just like you just spend without thinking it's the eternal summer you know you never think there's going to be winter right with the sun so when the sun is here with saturn in aquarius in a very cold place uh, you know we've got the sun our sense of you know can we just keep spending that has gone cold across the month of march I've got here, if we see the sun as our wealth and safety, yes, this was massively squeezed across March. Uh, the other thing is that Aquarius is also the people. So we've definitely seen that the people have been nervous about their money and, you know, are taking it out. Uh, fair enough. Yes, if you have money invested in, in a small institution, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, I've got here Saturn was casting 10th aspect into Scorpio, the house of other people's money. Okay, uh, Jupiter in Pisces has also been casting its aspect into Scorpio as well. So I feel like both of these have acted in materializing some of the problems that we've seen in banking, right? So Silicon Valley Bank collapsed 10th March. Uh, I've also got the note here, bank runs are possible while Saturn is casting aspect into Scorpio. So that's really until March 2025. But March this year has been particularly challenging, as I say, because Sun has been with Saturn. That feeling of, you know, that we can't, you know, uh, go on like this. Or we can't just keep spending or and people feeling conservative about money, people taking their money out, you know, and we're, we're back to good old uh, fashioned bank runs uh, now aren't we runs on banks or whatever however you phrase that um, if I've got that wrong I'll, I'll put up a note by my side but um, yeah bank runs it's the new thing it's the new old thing 
like like this place where I'm sitting, the new old place, right? So um, yeah, we've got some of that happening in the collective. I've got the note here that I think troubles in banking should ease off when Jupiter's aspect is no longer being cast into Scorpio. So that's really 22nd April onwards. Let's look at that. It, it could ease off uh, 22 April onwards, but certainly the month of March, yeah, uh, through to kind of 22 April, I am seeing that there can be problems in banking. Problems being brought up, especially if you are particularly dependent, and which I believe Silicon Valley Bank, I think, now I'm not too familiar with this. I just briefly saw, I had a cold fusion video on while I was cooking and I've half listened to it. But as I understand it, I think Silicon Valley Bank was the kind of bank that people very much depended on. It was kind of small entrepreneurs were really depending on it for cash flow. Again, that's a very Scorpio type thing. Scorpio is dependence. So, you know, where there are dependencies, Saturn is casting aspect into that, uh, you know, pressing on weak links. And sometimes when Saturn presses on the weak links, things break, right? And you will see that happen in your Saturn returns. You can see that happen as Saturn is passing over your moon, side to side the period, all that kind of thing, right? So let's keep going here. Now I've got here, yes, the next item of news across the month of March, people becoming aware of injustice. This is really happening now. So millions of people uh, awakened across the month of March. And this has been reported by some of the alternative media channels that I have been watching where they pointed out that the scale of awakening is really increasing now. Saturn has moved into Aquarius and this is going to continue. This is going to rise through to March 2025. Uh, I've got here millions awakened across the month of March. You know, the illness of 2020 that was trending, uh, it, the, the name of that was trending in March. That was on Twitter. Okay, that's this March of this year. The name of that illness, which I'm not going to say because I have been spanked by YouTube one time before, so I want to be careful. But um, yeah, apparently the name of that illness was trending this month of March. I'm recording this, by the way, on the 22nd of March. Due to Matt Hancock's tweets being leaked, I believe, I think was it his tweets or his WhatsApp or something like that. I did hop on the BBC today and I had a little bit of a read of what was going on. I mean, goodness me, it's just terrible, all of this. So, uh, but good, but, but good, needed, you know, I mean, secrets are coming to the surface. Okay, again, Scorpio's aspect in, uh, Saturn's aspect into Scorpio, we've got secrets coming to the surface and Jupiter's aspect in there has been materializing evidence, things that we're able to see. But I thought this was very relevant, this thing about Matt Hancock's tweets or WhatsApp messages or whatever it was that they've been exposed. Um, he, he, he is an odd oddity, isn't he? It's like he's being paid to be to play this role or something. I'm not sure. It's all very confusing. But anyway, I've got here 3rd to 5th of March. We had Sun, Mercury and Saturn in the 11th house. Saturn casting aspect into Scorpio. Hang on a minute. Now was Jupiter casting aspect as well? I just want to double check that. It would have been uh, 3 to... Yes. Yes, it... it Yes, yes, it definitely was. So that's another example of a materialization. Saturn and Jupiter, when they cast aspect together, they can materialize something. They can make it real. So they've exposed, they've done a good job of exposing uh, information here. And Sun and Mercury and Saturn in Aquarius at this time is the people. The people waking up. We've got the sun here. People being able to see, right? So amazing, amazing what's going on. But lots and lots of people are, you know, waking up to alternative stories of, you know, what was uh, told to us that was going on. People are realizing, oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't quite what it what it seemed. Of course, we on this channel, we've known the whole time, but you know, it's okay. Look, I've got friends who, you know, they took 
the juice and they continue to mask up that's fine with me and equally my friend I'm thinking of one particular friend she she's she's still on board with the traditional mainstream story and and I'm not and I'm cool with her believing what she believes and equally she's cool with me believing what I believe you know and I think that is more important than anything right hopefully these uh, things like awakening and this isn't being used to you know as power over somebody else or, or any of that like when we look at our day-to-day -day lives awakening awakening is just a natural thing that happens in its own time and um, you know that's why I know I just said that thing about well here on this channel we knew like it sounded very but it's I don't want to be like that anyway <laughs> I want you to know that you know friends of mine they they, they believe different things and they're, they're my friends you know and equally they don't mind that I believe what wacky things I believe right so it's all good all right now let's keep going here month of April what do we have going on what are the energies in the month of April right we have a couple of big things that I'm going to talk about. These are the big things that I'm going to talk about in everybody's mini report, and that is Jupiter moving into Aries. This is very exciting. And we do as, as well have a Parivartana exchange happening between Mars and Mercury. I find that really interesting, and especially uh, in the mini readings, that, that portion is going to be quite interesting for everybody. So it would be interesting to know how that plays out for people. But let's take a look at the big movement, you know, um, let, let's take a look at Jupiter here, Rahu Jupiter conjunction. So I'll just talk briefly about a Rahu Jupiter conjunction and what it can be good for. Okay, in a birth chart, Rahu Jupiter conjunction is beautiful. All right, and I have many clients um, thinking of there's a good handful of you who've got you've got a Rahu Jupiter in the first house, and you are rapidly uh, you know becoming more enlightened and you're figuring things out and you know and you share with me your journey and it's always amazing to to hear how how it goes it's a great conjunction right in the birth chart I've got here at its height it can give rise to great wisdom to enlightenment a great teacher this is someone who loves to learn this is someone who can share wisdom uh, can figure things out you know I've got here even you know a person who could start a new religion wow <laughs> okay so Rahu Jupiter can be very um, yeah could start it could start a cult or a religion or something like that but who have I got as examples famous examples Alan Watts he had this Rahu Jupiter you know wasn't he a great teacher he was phenomenal he's a great teacher because he kept learning all the time uh, and Maria Montessori, she's a person who had this Rahu Jupiter conjunction in her chart and she innovated with education, right? Rahu can be very innovative. Jupiter, you know, is, is the professor, very big on education. So a Rahu Jupiter conjunction t can do incredible things. But what is this conjunction like in its shadow? Okay, and we're going to possibly, I hope not, but you know, we might experience uh, some things of Rahu Jupiter if we're looking for okay what how is it not going to be a good thing I've got here um, the note it can give rise to extreme stupidity and I know that doesn't sound very good but um, I've got here can be some very bad decisions uh, that are very stupid as a result of this placement it, it can and I'll give you a couple of examples of times in kind of recent history where we have had a prominent Rahu Jupiter in the sky and you know a couple of past times when it hasn't been a good thing right so we had it in 2001 11 September 2001 right those two buildings came down uh, you know and that 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 was a total disaster we had Rahu and Jupiter in airy Gemini at that time if we have a look at the 2008 banking crisis we had Rahu Jupiter in earthy Capricorn right so earth capricorn finance money yeah rahu jupiter 2008 banking crisis that was december 2008 onwards and i clicked up through the days and yes jupiter had just stepped into uh let me just do that now 2008 so i can absolutely double check but i did as i was putting these notes together click up through 
the days and I saw that Jupiter had just moved in to Capricorn in December 2008, right? So now we've got Rahu and Jupiter going to be in fiery Aries. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have September 2001, Rahu, Jupiter in Aries, Gemini. It was an air thing. It was an air attack. The buildings came down. 2008 banking crisis, earthy Capricorn is where we had that Rahu, Jupiter. So that's, you know, uh, stupidity and chaos in connection with money, right? Now we've got Rahu Jupiter in fiery Aries. Okay, we're going to have this placement from 22 April 2023 to 29 November 2023. So we have this placement, Jupiter's moving in to the house where Rahu is on 22 April 2023. And then Rahu is moving out of the house on 29 November 2023. So this period something chaotic or and i'm going to say stupid could happen now we've got fiery aries so i am gonna in a light touch sort of way use these words look i, I don't want any of these things to happen but i've got the note here war fires nuclear electricity all this kind of thing we have had a lot of fires rahu has been in aries and that has been, you know, factories on fire, egg factories on fire, plastics. I saw one, one recently that was some plastics company that was on fire or something along those lines. Um, what other things could happen here? Let's have a look. Well, I do have something to say about just Jupiter moving into Aries. Collectively, that could be mm, adding weight to countries becoming more individual. So nation states might make choices to separate from collective agreements. Okay, so we could have that. I saw in the news just today, uh, Swedish lawmakers vote to endorse country joining NATO. So it seems like I think Sweden is joining NATO. And that's quite interesting that that has happened today on the 22nd of March, because we do have Jupiter still in Pisces right and it's in Revati. so this is the last opportunity jupiter has jupiter in pisces will want to join there'll be a more more of an emphasis on things joining up coming together but jupiter in aries is i would say nation states wanting to become individual nation, nation states wanting to be independent separate you know doing their own thing right and this this could be happening uh, in, in various ways all around the world. So as I say, Rahu Jupiter, at, when we're looking at its shadow, it, it can give rise to some chaos and or stupidity. Uh, it's, not, it's not the nicest word, but I am choosing it <laughs> deliberately for this placement because that's in its shadow, right? As I say, and it's enlightened, wonderful, state you have people like Alan Watts and you have people like Maria Montessori and you have incredible things come out of this conjunction so you know we can have amazing things come out of this time as well the other thing that we've got going on here in this month of April is we have a Parivartana exchange between Mars and Mercury Mercury is in Aries so that's Aries the physical body and we've got Mars in Gemini Gemini the mind Okay, so I've got the note here on a personal note. This is an excellent time to figure out the mental patterns that have been creating in ill health in your life, right? So that could be in your body, in your finances, in your emotions, whatever it is. But you might be able to figure out the mental things. This is Mercury and Aries, right? What, what's happening mentally that's causing something in the physical body? And Mars and Gemini. Mars can represent the physical body. Gemini, of course, is the mind. So it's very interesting. This Parivartan exchange, I mean, I, I think this is going to be really interesting energy. Uh, but how, So that's how it plays out potentially personally. And for every single one of you, when it comes to the mini reports, I will be uh, sharing with you how I see it playing out just for you. But on the world stage, I've got here, this could be a time where the valuations of things 
are like you start to see the gaps kind of thing. So this, this could be financial. I've got the note here. So company X is valued at this much, but in the real world, it's only worth this much. You know, it's this kind of thing. I've got here again, more financial collapses are possible at this time. So that's really across the month of April. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything. Uh, I think I'm good to begin the mini readings. I'm just going to check the time. We're okay for time. How about we dive straight into this? So those of you who like to watch the whole thing, join me. We're going to go through all of the signs in turn. Or perhaps you're doing the ironing and the computer's far away and you just, you're just not able to switch me off, right? <laughs> so let's take a look at Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon, or even Aries Sun. You can look up your sun as well if you want to. I've had people question about that. You're very welcome to do that. You can just watch your Moon and Ascendant. That's fine too. Uh, so if, and that's as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology, right? You've got to look up your signs. So if you are Aries, what do we have going on? Well, on the 6th of April, we have got a full moon in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra happening in your sixth house. So you might become aware of something at work that was hidden and unknown. The other thing that with this full moon energy, it might be demanding more of you. Okay, this is Virgo, this is work. So there's something possibly demanding about this full moon. I've got here, how can you be more hands-on at work or in what you do? Or perhaps things are just more busy in your life at this time. That is a possibility as well. It's like there's something more being asked of you, something along these lines. Now there is a Parivartana exchange between Mars and Mercury. Now we're looking at houses when we're looking at where is this Parivartan exchange happening. It's happening between houses one and three for you. And this is from the 1st of April to the 10th of May. So this is a time of figuring out what repetitive mental habits you have that cause reoccurring or chronic illnesses, right? Uh, and this is all that kind of Louise Hay type of work where, and if you type in Louise Hay affirmations, you'll come to, that's in Google, you will come to a list of all the different ailments and what kind of mental pattern might be causing that. If you haven't checked out Louise Hay's incredible work in that regard, you've got to take a look. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, she didn't do it all on her own. She had a lot of clients and patients and word got out about this thing and everybody contributed to it. So it's a really incredible list of uh, you know, what's happening in your body and what's happening in the mind that's creating that. So this for you, I talked about this in the introduction. For you, it, it, it actually is playing out this way that uh, due to this perivarathan exchange, you'll be able to figure out, okay, wow, I keep getting headaches all the time. And headaches is a thing of perfectionism. I've figured that out after a very long time. Christiane Northrup has talked about that. She's one of Louise Hayes' authors as well and you know there's lots of people into this work but um, yeah you, you'll be able to figure out possibly what is the mental thing behind chronic illness and then as you become aware of that it will go away. I can tell you with my headaches I've been working at this for years and as I was saying I've been working at it for years and Sorry, the camera cut out. Um, and basically, yeah, I've, I think I've, I've knocked it on the head, quite literally. I don't get them anymore. I do get them a little bit. Um, but now if I take just, there's a simple homeopathic remedy I take. Uh, it's just magnesium phosphorus. I just take that and it, it vanishes. Uh, it, it's not a problem for me anymore. I used to chronically take paracetamol and this and that. I don't anymore. So this stuff works, but I'll tell you it has taken me years. I don't know if I could have done it in a Parivartana exchange, right? <laughs> but, but Because this is 1st April to 10th May. But see what you can do with this time frame if you have something like that that you want to work through and you want to figure out. 
I've got here, uh, it's a great time to adjust any fitness routines or any dietary routines as well. Now you've got Jupiter in Aries in your first house from 22 April onwards through to, now this is long, May, 1st May 2024. Okay, so we're looking at April 2023 to May 2024. It's a big transit. I'm just going to touch on it in a very high level way here. I might do a, a, a separate breakout video where I go more in depth. But at a very high level, your leadership abilities are going to be in focus for this whole year. And you're one of the lucky three signs, Aries, because for you, it is all about leadership. It's like, you know, the fire is on. It's like, it's like a match and the, the flame is on and, and, and the universe is saying, what's over to you? How do, how do you want to direct the flame, right? This is a time where you can really feel in charge of your own life. And it is almost as if the universe is going to be asking you kind of every day, what are you creating? What are you doing? What, you know, where are you directing the flame of your life? What do you want to build, right? This really is for you to decide, okay? Because this is fire. This is, this is leadership. This is, uh, you know, and I was listening to something before recording this where it was a tarot reader actually and she was saying something about a person being afraid to make a decision, which is why they let authority decide for them. I thought that was so fascinating. So this is a time where you, you, you can't really be afraid of making a decision. You're going to have to decide. You're going to have to direct the course of your life. You know, so it's for you, it's not a, so much when we look at Jupiter in Aries transiting, you know, through your first house, it's not so much what's Jupiter going to give me. For you, it's actually what are you, how are you going to direct this fire, okay? Really, really interesting. Uh, now, on the 20th of April, there is a new moon happening in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra in your first house. So this is your new moon, Aries. This is all about you. Wow, it's a big one. And it's also a busy one because there's quite a few planets in the house at the same time. So this is really an excellent time to plant a seed for a brand new you. A great time to envis envision a new reality for yourself. Who do you really want to be? And this is not just job. This is not just relationship or it's not just your stuff. This is who do you want to be at your core, you know, what kind of a person do you want to be? What do you want to be known for? When other people think of you, what would you like them to be thinking? This is a time where you can really go into some of that and visualize what you would like. And that visualization is like a seed that you're going to plant at this time on the 20th of April, your new moon. Those visualizations, they can bear fruit you know, further down the track. So Aries, I'm liking the look of this month for you. And this is the first month where you're going to taste that Jupiter in Aries energy. Jupiter's coming to your sign. The spotlight is kind of on you and, and the universe is looking to you as to how, how are you going to uh, decide and create? What are you going to create going forward? I'm excited for you, Aries. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome... Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. You can really just look at your moon and your ascendant, but some of you have asked about looking at the sun. You're welcome to do that as well. All right. Now on the 6th of April, we have got a full moon in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So you might become aware of something in your love life. Let's take a look at this. Yes, indeed. Sorry, apologies. I was just looking at the previous slide. You could become aware of something in your love life at this time, or it could also be to do with your children. Okay. Uh, if you have children, there'll be it's like some light has been shed on something. Perhaps a secret might be revealed or there's just something you're going to understand in a deeper way at a deeper level. So be on the lookout for that. Also something in your love life. So if you are in a committed relationship, 
some dynamic, some pattern, maybe there's something that you're just going to understand even more. And perhaps that's going to be an area where you can relax about that other person because you understand them a bit more, you see a bit more, right? Now, if you are single, this could really be a time where you are lovesick, maybe you're missing someone, maybe you're missing romance in your life. Uh, but what you will be able to do, every person, uh, every Taurus person here will be able to see clearly your own creative aspirations, what it is that you want to create. Perhaps you'll get a lot more ideas at this time or you'll see clearly the way forward when it comes to your creativity. You'll get some ideas, something like that. Now there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Mars and Mercury. This is houses 12 and 2 for you. This is from 1st April to 10th May. So I've got here, you can figure out where your financial losses are and what you are saving. This is, this is to do with, you know, perhaps you're spending too much in one area and this is a time where you discovered, you know what, I could switch that plan and I could save money, right? Something like that. There's some kind of thing where you become aware of, okay, I'm actually losing money here. If I do X, Y, Z action, I can actually start saving. There'll be something like this. I've got here, this is an excellent time to get on top of finances so you can build savings and plug any losses. Okay, this is the month to do that. I know it's admin, it's boring, it's annoying, but <laughs> you'll have to make time. This, this is a good time to make time to do those boring things. Uh, now Jupiter is in Aries. That's going to be across your 12th house. And this is for a long time. This is from the 22nd of April through to the 1st of May next year, right? This is long, this transit. I might do a breakout video where I talk about it more later, but just at a very high level, you could be expanding yourself spiritually. It's a great time to learn more about anything spiritual or occult in nature. You could also be expanding your home. You could be renovating or improving your home. You could even move where you live. That's a possibility. But there's definitely quite a bit of expansion and definitely your spiritual side uh, could, could really expand at this time. You're going to learn so much. Jupiter is just a wonderful energy when it comes to learning. You can consume a lot of information especially on spiritual occult topics, any of that kind of thing. It's a real time to grow, to learn. Now on the 20th April, there's a new moon in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your 12th house. So this could be a busy time for you, but what you'll find on the 20th of April is that you just want to escape. You want to escape it all and carve out a little bit of me time. Okay, I strongly advise this on the 20th of April. Carve out a little bit of time just for you and visualize what you'd like to achieve going forward. That could be in life, but also as a spiritual being. You know, you can plant a seed on this day, the 20th of April, that you want to grow more spiritually. You want to deepen your spiritual practice. You want to find the answers. You want to know. You know, you want to know at a deeper level. And, and a lot of that is intuition as well. Intuition is where you just know. Maybe there's something you really want to know more about. So you could plant a seed at this time where you visualize and you see yourself figuring out the answers. And that could materialize further down the track. So Taurus, I'm liking the look of this month for you. I'm especially liking the practicality of this Parivartana exchange. <laughs> Sometimes we just need to devote time to boring administrative things but that will make a difference in the long run. Taurus, I want to thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 6th of April, we have a full moon in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra happening in your fourth house. So something regarding your relationship with your mother could come to light. This could be, and this, you know, 
perhaps you're very young and you live with her. Perhaps you're like me. I wasn't so young living with her for the last three years. I was at my mum's place. Um, but equally, it could be, you know, you maybe you're quite a bit older and maybe mother is no longer on the earth plane. It doesn't matter, okay, because your relationship with her, it's, it's forever. It's eternal, right? And she is. You know, she's just another format, perhaps. Like, that's how I speak for, you know, those who have crossed over. I say they're in another format or another form. Uh, so something regarding this relationship with your mother could come to light. This could be very healing in nature, okay? You might figure something out about that relationship and you get a big aha and you go, oh, wow, that makes sense. Or this whole part of my life makes sense now, you know, that kind of thing. So that could happen at this full moon. Very often we have big awakenings, realizations, you know, light is shed on something. We, knew, we, we understand things in a new perspective, right? That can happen. I've got here something to do with home uh, could become more obvious to you. And this could be just very practical. This could be, you know, you're made aware of repairs needed uh, in the home. For example, me. I've got so many repairs <laughs> needed in my place right now. I've been away for a while. And so, yeah, things are broken and I have to, well, not too many things, just a couple of things. But, you know, I have to deal with like engineers and plumbers and things like that at the moment and get on top of things. So, yeah, that could happen for you, Gemini. Practical things. Look at that. You're either healing some dynamic from, you know, childhood or dealing with repairs in the home. <laughs> um, very different things there. But I've got here, there's also a great time to write out your thoughts. If you like that as a therapy, I do. I need to do that actually. I've got a journal up there on the shelf and I'm like, oh, I need to sit down and write stuff out. It's a very good therapy. It's just write it out and then it's kind of released somehow. So it's a good time to write out your thoughts on that full moon. There's a Parivartan exchange happening between Mars and Mercury, houses 1 and 11 for you. This is from 1st April to 10th May. So you can figure out why, if you have been, why you have been self-sabotaging on new opportunities. Okay, If you have been doing that, it will become clear, right? Most people do. <laughs> Most people self-sabotage when it comes to exciting new opportunities. We do that, don't we? Uh, so yeah, don't, don't feel alone if that's you. So I've got here, you can figure out why you self-sabotage on new opportunities or what are the blocks to you creating and launching or publishing or getting that new thing off the ground, whatever it is that you want to do, right? There are various things that you know you want to do. You want to put them in place. You know that they'll help you make more money. What are those things? And why are you sabotaging? Why are you not doing it yet, right? So you can figure that out. 1st April to 10th May. The energy is on for you to figure out, okay, what, what's blocking? What's, what's, what's stopping this from happening? Uh, now, Jupiter is going to be in Aries in your 11th house. This is from the 22nd of April onwards through to May next year. So this is a really long time. I might do a breakup video where I talk more about this, but at a very, very high level. This is all about leadership in communication. This is a time for you to communicate brilliantly, okay? People are going to want to hear what you have to say. The social media platforms that you run are going to grow at this time got the note here, don't be afraid to put your unique view out there. Absolutely. Get it out there. And look, I mean, you've got that Parivartana exchange helping you as well. That's going to show you what are the blocks to you launching, hitting the button on it, getting it going. And if it's social media, that's going to be part of what it is that you do. Again, you'll be shown what are the blocks. And very often, the blocks are just something that we need to consciously acknowledge and be aware of and then release it. Just release it. Just let it go. Just, you know, and it might come back up again. But welcome it if it does. Okay. Uh, sometimes people get annoyed. They get angry. They're like, oh, I thought I dealt with that. Well, you know that you're healing when you can face it again, right? When you welcome it, 
another time where you welcome it. You go, oh, yeah, it's all right. If that happens again, I know how to deal with it, right? It's that kind of thing. I'm excited for this uh, Jupiter transit for you, Gemini. I think this is going to be incredible. So definitely you, you, there's something about you being seen, being heard, being understood. It, it's going to be great. Now on the 20th of April, there is a new moon happening in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. <clears throat> so this is a very social time for you. Lots of people might want your time and attention. But if you can, on the 20th of April, carve out a little bit of time and space so that you can plant a seed for the next big opportunity that you would love to have come into your life. And that would be a great thing to do. Gemini, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 6th of April, there is a full moon happening in Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra in your third house. So something regarding where you are lacking courage to move forward will be shown to you at this time. And you're going to, I think you're going to be able to act on that. I think you're going to find the courage. Now, the other thing that can happen at this full moon is that you'll see and understand your friendships in far sharper focus as well. You're going to really know who are your true friends and who are people who, you know, maybe they're not really there for you. Uh, that's just going to become obvious. I don't see that you need to do anything about that. I just see you going up in awareness, going up in understanding. There's something's going to illuminate. And you're going to be easier about friendships and things like that as well. Now, there's a Parivartana exchange happening between Mars and Mercury between your 12th and 10th houses. Now, this is from the 1st of April to the 10th of May. So due to this exchange, you'll be able to figure out what hidden beliefs have been holding you back career wise. OK, what is it that you've believed about yourself? Are there certain things that you've believed about destiny perhaps that well it's not in my destiny or it's it's in that person's destiny but it's not in mine or what are these beliefs what are these hidden beliefs that perhaps have been holding you back in terms of your career I've also got the note that you can also figure out how to work smarter and not harder with these energies so it doesn't matter if say for example career is not a thing for you this is to do though with your effort in the world what you are responsible for i did a video about this uh, how to read 10th house stars if you're not working so if you want you can take a look at that on the channel but um definitely this thing around hidden beliefs that have been holding you back career wise if not that you'll just be able to figure out how to work smarter not harder with these energies now we've got jupiter in aries happening in your 10th house from 22 April through to May of next year. Very long transit, right? You're gonna get the first taste of that in April. I might do a breakout video on this, talk about it more in depth, but at a very high level, what I'm gonna say is that your career is set to grow during this time. You'll be given more responsibilities and if you rise to the challenges, you will make more money and you will increase your savings. I've got the note here, don't worry if there's a job loss because probably that will be replaced with a better job. OK, so stay optimistic, stay positive here uh, with this transit cancer. Now, there is a new moon happening on the 20th of April in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your 10th house. You might be very busy at work on the 20th of April, but if you can carve out a little bit of me time uh, just a little bit of time, five minutes, you know, it doesn't have to take long. And envisage yourself in your dream job. What does that look like? You know, if you're doing your dream job, what is it that you're doing? Are you more in charge of your own time? You know, that's always a good thing to wish for. Maybe you just want more flexibility. Maybe you love what you do, but you just want more flexibility around that. I've got the note here, that seed might sprout down the track, but this is the day to plant the seed and to visualize what it is you really dream of, okay? Because the energy is there to, to start growing that seed. 
Cancer, I'm liking the look of this month for you, especially your full moon. I'm really liking the look of that. I'm liking the look of, you know, that that courage, uh, that courage coming up for you to act and take the next step, whatever that is. Cancer, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo ascendant, Leo moon or Leo sun as per this ideal Vedic system of astrology. And if you only have time for two, definitely watch your ascendant and your moon. So on the 6th of April, we have a full moon in Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra. For you, that's happening in your second house. So something from childhood could be illuminated at this time. You get some kind of aha happen regarding your childhood and something heals, right? This could be some long-standing thing possibly as well. Uh, equally, it could be something illuminated regarding your finances that needs attention. I realize these two are vastly different things. You know, we've got one that's profoundly healing potentially and we've got the other one is, well, something to do with your finances, right? Very practical. But it's true, right? Your big savings are here in the second house. That's where the big money lives, the savings, the stable savings that lives there in the second house. So something could be illuminated regarding your, your finances. Now, there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Mars and Mercury. This is for you, your 11th and 9th houses will be exchanging from 1 April to 10th May. So you can work to unravel a challenging situation amongst friends or siblings. There's something here that you might figure out and you might be able to help your friends or your siblings. Okay, I've got here, you will have understanding of the situation and possibly be able to advise or step in and help. Now, be careful here of unsolicited help. Nobody likes that, so don't do that. But if you have something to do with some kind of situation I'm seeing, the challenging between friends or siblings, could even be a long-standing thing as well, but it's kind of like this is the month where you have the insight, you have the understanding of the situation, you can really see it. And if you're asked <laughs> to help, then you can step in and help. You can step in and offer guidance, advice, all that kind of thing. But wait to be asked. <laughs> that is a classic with uh, healers and light workers. It's like the, what are they, the, the, some, I've never even seen, is this a film, Fight Club? They always talk about the, the rules of Fight Club. Well, the first rule of healership is wait to be asked. If someone doesn't ask you, don't step in and help, right? Because that help won't, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll fly like a lead balloon, right? Which is not at all. Okay, Jupiter in Aries. Jupiter is going to be transiting Aries in your ninth house. This is from 22nd April through to the 1st of May, 2024, right? This is a long transit. I might cover this in another video, but just at a very, very high level, uh, you're gonna taste this energy, 22 April onwards. And for you, you are going to be massively empowered to direct the course of your life. So you are one of the lucky three signs where it's kind of like, it's. I feel like it's not so much you know, you're, you're asking, well, what's Jupiter going to do for me? It's kind of like Jupiter's asking you, well, you're, you, you know, this is, this is down to you. I've got the note here, universe is looking at you. What do you want to create? It's about creativity. This is about, this is an expansion of your flame, of your fire, right? So that's going to be amplified. That's going to be expanded. So what are you going to do with that? What are you going to create with that? This creativity energy. This is leadership energy. How are you going to direct this energy? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to grow? What do you want to do? I've got the note here. The flame is burning. Every moment is precious. How are you directing the life force? It's in your hands, right? So this is a time of being very empowered. Uh, as I say, I might go deeper into this in, in another video and I might say other type of things, but at the moment, <laughs> that's what I've got here right now. Uh, but it is, it is that kind of thing. This is an expansion of the flame, right? 
So it's down to you. You're one of the lucky three signs where it really is down to you. Now, 20th April, there's a new moon in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. So you could possibly be very busy at this time. You could be possibly very busy studying or with coursework or at work as well. Uh, or perhaps you're, you know, maybe your father's getting you to, to do extra work or something like that, something in connection with father. I don't know, but you're very busy. You're very busy on the 20th of April. And I've got here that this is a brilliant new moon where you can wish for spiritual guidance to always be with you across this entire year so that it helps you to direct your life force. Uh, I've got here wish for wisdom. Yeah, I think that's a great thing to wish for because you've got this powerful Jupiter in Aries, which is 22 April to yeah May 2024. That's a long time. Wish for guidance, spiritual guidance in how to direct your life force over the next year. Wow, wish for wisdom. Yeah, that's always, that's a great wish. That's just a great general purpose wish to wish for all the time anyway. Wish for wisdom. I'm excited for you, Leo. I think this is going to be great. And when it comes to directing your life force, you know, let's not forget, so this is the first house. So this is like Aries, Leo, Sag. This is that trine is kind of lit up. It's a fire trine that's lit up. This does include, you know, romance. This does include having children. This does include, you know, more than career. It also includes learning, finding a guru, all that kind of thing. There's a lot to wish for uh, and, and, and direct, you know, your, your energy and create. You can create all kinds of things. So think big, Leo. Think big. All right, we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 6th of April, we have got a full moon happening in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra in your first house. So this is your full moon, Virgo. This is all about you. You are going to be wise and all-knowing at this time. Uh, carry a notebook if ideas come. Also document your dreams around this time. I was watching a tarot reader recently and she had a great idea for recording your dreams because I've always said this thing about write them down and sometimes I'm just too lazy because when you wake up and it's you know seven in the morning or whatever and you're just oh it's lazy right. So she says put your phone on and record it into the phone. I thought, what a great idea, right? I've got to share that through my monthlies. Yeah, put the phone on. I'll, I will try that because I'm pretty terrible at documenting my dreams. As I was saying, I'm pretty terrible at documenting my dreams. So I will try that phone thing because that's so easy to do. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's have a look here. And the other thing is I've set my phone. This is a little tip for anyone who wants guidance on phone stuff. I've set my phone to only work on the Wi-Fi and this is, I figured all this out when I've come back here. I wasn't doing this in Sydney. I had it all. Anyway, I've now worked out the ultimate system because I turn off my Wi-Fi every night. So my phone is only set to pick up messages from the Wi-Fi. So it's brilliant when I turn on my phone in the morning. I use my Insight Timer, my meditation app, so I don't get any messages come. So that's so good, like it's really, really helpful. So when I turn on my phone, the other thing I've done is I put all my apps that show there's a message, I put them all on the second screen. So that way as well, if there are messages, I don't see them. So yeah, if you know, yeah, I, I've worked out these nice little things that I'm able to just have a free morning, like where I'm not bombarded by stuff or any of that. It helps. Okay, anyway, uh, where were we up to? I think we were up to... Did I go through? No, I haven't. I haven't gone through your Parivartan Exchange. Let's go through that now. So Parivartan Exchange, what's going on there? There is a Parivartan Exchange in the sky between Mars and Mercury. And this for you is your 10th and 8th houses. This is from the 1st of April to the 10th of May. So you will be able to understand deep dynamics and patterns at work. 
you will get a sense of hidden agendas at work. A lot of things are going to make sense to you at this time. And what I would suggest is keep your insights or all the knowledge that you get, keep all of that secret. Okay, don't be uh, sharing that around, but I, it's kind of like there's a lot of things that are going to occur to you. You might find out some interesting things at this time. And if, let's say, for example, you're not working, you're not in a corporate workplace or any of that, this could be about the world. This could be about hidden agendas to do with large organizations that you follow or, you know, things like that. You, you might get some real ahas and some real insights if you, especially if you check into alternative media or any of that kind of thing. So yeah, even if you're not working, this, this Parivartana exchange is going to help you uh, see under the surface of things even more. Now Jupiter is going to be in Aries in your eighth house. This is from 22 April onwards through to the 1st of May. I'm going to cover this in a really high level way now, but hopefully I'll do a video where I go a bit deeper into this energy. But I've got the note here for you. Uh, if Now, if you're somebody who's prone to weight gain or, or you know, is having challenges with maintaining a certain weight and things like that, that could fluctuate at this time. So be careful with Jupiter in Aries in your eighth. This can create weight gain. So if, if that's something that... Uh, you know, has been an issue for you or something that you want to stay on top of, then that's just something to bear in mind there. Um, you may have to be a little bit more strict with your diet, that kind of thing at this time. Maybe. See how it goes. I've got here, be careful of debt accumulation during this transit as well. Okay, so you might be susceptible to accumulating more debt. Look at that. We're looking at, you know, yeah, accumulating weight or it could manifest as accumulating debt. It can go that way as well. I've got here spiritually though, you're going to become so wise due to this transit. Um, you'll be able to study lots as well. If there's lots of things that you want to study and learn about the occult especially or spiritual things, I've got here you'll soak up wisdom, enlightenment. Um, you could also uh, initiate improvements to your home you might even move, you might upgrade where you live or something like that. But uh, it's going to be a pretty amazing transit there, Jupiter in Aries for you, Virgo. I'm excited about that. Now on the 20th of April, there is a new moon in Aries, Ashwini Nakshatra, happening in your 8th house. I have the note here, great time to get away if you can. Um, if you're able to carve out a little bit of me time. You know, I mean, the little getaway, this is that kind of, you know, you and your sweetheart just hop in a car and vanish somewhere that could be really nice uh, carve out some me time as well now the me time you'll want that for and that's just like five or ten minutes uh, so that you can wish for something this is a new moon you can plant a seed right and what ideally you could be wishing for is new energy to invigorate your family uh, or for a healing for your family relationships if there's something that you want healed in your family you know, this is a time to wish for that. So that's on the 20th of April, the new moon there in your eighth house. Virgo, I'm wishing you a great month ahead. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. And this is Libra, Ascendant Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 6th of April, we have got a full moon in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra happening in your 12th house. So spiritually, you're going to get all kinds of new insights at this time. Secrets might be revealed to you. You might figure things out. You might get some really deep aha moments uh, at this time on the 6th of April. I've got a note here, keep a dream journal around this full moon or write down your dreams or you can record your dreams on your phone. So you can just switch on your phone. I'm yet to try this. I heard this from a tarot reader recently. Um, you can just switch your phone on and then record your dream. I think that's a really good idea because you know, when you're half asleep, do you really want to be writing things down? Not really. I've got here um, also creative ideas could occur to you here on the 6th of April. Now there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Mars and Mercury. This is houses 9 and 7. So this is from the 1st of April to the 10th of May. You might be able to figure out some issues in your relationship with the person that you're committed to. 
Okay, if you're in a committed relationship, you might work out some things uh, in, in that relationship. You could also work out, yeah, I've got here, you could work out, it doesn't matter if you're with someone or single or what, I've got here issues around authority, control and power can all be navigated intelligently at this time. Yeah. The other thing is, if you are in a relationship, or maybe this is just if you're single, there's something that you might connect a dot with how your relationship was with your father and why you are the way you are. Okay, that's another thing that could happen due to this Parivartana exchange. Uh, 1st April to 10th May. Now Jupiter is in Aries across your 7th house from 22 April onwards through to May of next year. So you're going to become a very powerful communicator at this time. Your social media platforms are set to grow. And if you are self-employed or work on a contract by contract basis, uh, this could be a time where that steps up quite a lot and you are very busy. Okay, so watch out for all these things. I might do a deeper breakout video on Jupiter and Aries. We'll see how I go for time. But that's at a very high level what I'm seeing. Now on the 20th of April there is a new moon in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your seventh house. You might be very busy uh, at this time. That could be to do with your relationship. Your relationship might demand more attention from you or your business might demand more attention from you. Your public if you have maybe a social media platform or you write books or any of that. I've got the note here if you can carve out some me time and dream of the future what you would like it to be this is on the 20th of april this is just five minutes you don't have to carve out too much time five minutes and if you can visualize uh now if you're single visualize a dream partner who would you love to attract into your life or you could wish for a healing in your relationship that's a lovely thing to do so if you are in a relationship you could wish that together you know the two of you experience more intimacy you come together more you're more at one you're more on the same page you're closer than ever yeah, these are wonderful things to wish for so that's the 20th of April new moon there Libra I'm liking the look of what you've got going on here Libra I think this can this can be an amazing time for you April and if you're yet to start your social media platform, Libra, you've got to get on with it because it's so much fun. And, and don't worry about the negative comments. I get them as well and it's not nice, but, <laughs> but don't let it stop you. Just there's always, you know, everybody has an audience. That's what I've discovered with this whole YouTube thing. Every single person on the planet has an audience and you'd be surprised. I never thought people would, I don't know, be interested in, Vedic astrology but there are so many Vedic astrology channels and it's so much fun so you know whatever topic or area or your field is just try it out and make a fake account and don't tell anyone start that way that's how I started <laughs> all right well thank you Libra and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Scorpio ascendant Scorpio sun or Scorpio moon I do recommend if you can only watch two, watch Ascendant and Moon. Those are the most important as per Vedic astrology. But some of you have asked and said, can I watch my sun as well? And I say, yes, you can. So Ascendant, Moon or Sun, Scorpio, Sidereal Vedic System, welcome. Right, what have we got going on? Well, on the 6th of April, we have a full moon in Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. So there's some extra moonlight here. There's extra light that could be shared on your friendship circle, your work network or your siblings. And you might be more needed by these people at this time or you're more in demand or something along these lines. Uh, there's, there's more interactivity. This is 6th April. So look out for that. Now there's a Parivartan exchange happening between Mars and Mercury, houses 8 and 6 for you from 1st April to 10th May. So there could be a lot more challenges coming your way regarding work. But if you work with these challenges, you are going to be victorious. And why is that? We've got every Pritharaj Yoga forming here 
houses eight and six, right? So it's a Parivartana exchange and there's Vipreet Raj Yoga. So Vipreet Raj Yoga is a really beautiful thing because it doesn't mean that you do not encounter challenges. You will encounter challenges, but it's, it's kind of, it's a, it gives you a very strong, uh, the odds are stacked on you winning, okay? That's, that is a strong feature of the Vipreet Raj Yoga. If, but that's if you work with it, okay? So I've got here, be courageous, you'll win. It's like, and this is very much an eighth house thing. Eighth, eighth house, I often use the example, the firefighter runs into the building, right? So the building is on fire. Everybody's running out, the firefighter's running in. So if there's some kind of problem that you have to tackle or deal with across this period, 1st April to 10th May, be courageous, go in there with a view that, well, I'm going to sort it out. And guess what? You, you just might be able to do that. The stars are kind of on your side this month. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that you're some kind of superhero and like, so, you know, you got to uh, balance this out, right? But, but there, there are some good strong stars here for you is, is, is what I'm saying. But just, yeah. Don't, don't go overboard. <laughs> right. So Jupiter in Aries in your sixth house. That's 22 April onwards to May next year. It's a long transit. And I do want to cover it in a breakout video. I just haven't had time. But I've, 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 in a very high level way, summarized, you know, what Jupiter is going to do here and its aspects. So I've got here, be careful of health challenges. Okay. Jupiter in the sixth can sometimes expand uh, existing problems. All right, so that, that is a possibility. So what I'm going to say here is take extra care of your health. If you're feeling a bit tired, don't push it. You know, make sure you go home on time, wrap up warm, eat healthy food, stay away from sugar. All the good things are, I've been staying away from sugar. I have not eaten chocolate or biscuits or chips for like a whole month because I thought when I, I'm coming back to London, I thought I've got an opportunity to start fresh and just be a whole new person. And I am, and I'm doing it and it's working. But today I almost went out and bought some chocolate. It almost happened, it didn't happen. But I tell you what, this no sugar thing, it's brilliant. And I've, yeah, I've definitely detoxed from sugar. Um, that's a good one to do. But because it's very wintry outside, I am eating a little bit of meat. So, you know, it's not, it's not all perfect here by any stretch, but uh, I'm trying. But yeah, what I've got here is be aware of health challenges. Look after your health, eat well and exercise. Okay, Jupiter in Aries in the 6th for you, 22 April onwards. Just take a bit of extra care. And you'll find that when you consciously do that, it really does work. Because I've come back to London after having been in Sydney, Australia for three years, I was used to a warmer climate. And so here I'm not going out very much. And when I do go out, I wrap up extra. And everyone's like not wearing as much. I've got like my hat on, I've got gloves, I've got scarf, I've got everything. I'm just like, I don't care. I'm acclimatizing. And yeah, it's, it's working. I'm looking after my health and I haven't caught any bug or any of that. So yeah, so uh, that stuff works. I've got here, work is likely to be demanding more energy from you, but you can build your savings at this time. It is a good transit. Look, there, there are gonna be good aspects of this Jupiter in Aries for you, uh, but I do just think, don't push it when it comes to your health. Now, 20th April, new moon. This is in Aries, Ashwini Nakshatra, happening in your sixth house. So work might be very busy at this time. But if you can get a little bit of time, five to 10 minutes, you, it would be good for you to visualize the next step in your career. What would you love to do next? What's that next dream role that you'd love to, you know, is there a certain company you wanna work for? Or maybe you wanna work for yourself. What is it? What is it that you wanna do? Visualize yourself doing that on the 20th of April, because there's a new moon and you're planting a seed for your career. Because it's happening in your sixth house, that's career, right? That's your service to the world. So see yourself doing some incredible service to the world that makes you feel good. What is that thing? See yourself doing it on the 20th of April. Scorpio, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. 
Now on the 6th of April we have got a full moon in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra in your 10th house. So something to do with your work or your career might be illuminated at this time. There's going to be something that you understand in a deeper way. This could be in connection with your work team. This could be in connection with the bosses above you who manage you. Uh, something might come to light at this time. You might, might, might get an aha moment or some understanding of something to do with your work. The other thing is that more might be demanded of you at work on the 6th of April as well. Now, Parivaratana exchange is happening between Mars and Mercury, houses 7 and 5 for you from 1st April to 10th May. So you will be able to work out very clever and very sharp ways of improving relationships at this time, especially your relationship with your committed partner, the person that you are married to or in a very significant relationship with. Uh, and if you run a business, uh, this Parivartana exchange could show you really creative insights that will help you improve the way that you do your business. Okay, so really creative and clever things might occur to you. It's, so it's really either helping your relationship with the person you're committed to or it's going to help your business. Now Jupiter is in Aries. That'll be across your fifth house from 22 April onwards through to May of next year. It's a very long transit. Uh, now you are one of the lucky three signs. Yes, you are massively empowered to lead, to direct the course of your life. What are you going to create? Who do you want to be? What do you want this year to be about? April to May. Okay, it's like the, this is the flame of your life. The flame of your life is going to be expanded, right? The fire energy in your life is going to be expanded. So what are you going to do with it? The universe is kind of asking you. I know we come to these transit videos asking the universe, what have you got for me? But this is, a, this is a little bit different. I feel like the universe is asking you, what are you going to do? It's very exciting, Sagittarius. Now on the 20th of April, there is a new moon in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So life could be very busy at this time on this new moon, 20th April. Um, either, the, you know, you're spending time with the kids, the children, there's a lot going on with the kids, it's hectic at home. Uh, perhaps your romantic life, your romantic department, there's something going on there. You're busy, right? Um, but this is a good time to visualize if you can take some time out from any chaos that might be there on the 20th of April. It might be there for some people, it might not be for everybody. Uh, but it could be because we do, we do have a lot of planets in the house on this new moon. But this is a really good time, this 20th April new moon, to set aside a little bit of time, five to ten minutes, just to visualize what blessings you'd love to welcome into your life. What new things would you really like to see happen in your life? And these could even be simple things. Actually, it's amazing. I found this new pianist. She plays the piano beautifully. She's very young and super sweet young lady. I think she has autism as well, but she's a genius at the piano. And anyway, she's playing this incredible piece of music and I tried to find every single piece she's done on YouTube. I watched whatever I could find and I said to myself, I visualized myself seated in the auditorium and she's playing the piano. Like that, that would be a new blessing that I would love to have happen in my life, that I could be seated listening to her play the piano. So, you know, when it comes to the, and this is fifth house for you, yes, yeah, so this is creativity. For you, what new blessings, what new thing would you like to see? And I left a comment, I could see that her father had put up some of her videos. And I left a comment on one of the videos and I said, this is some of the most moving music I've heard in years. And I said, please post more and tell us when she's going to perform. Because, and the dad wrote back, it was so cool. I love when people write back. I know I don't write back anymore, but anyway, it's because I'm too busy. But like, <laughs> I used to write back. But I loved when I, yeah, when I get a, an answer from them, it's very exciting. And um, 
he said, yeah, no, he's definitely going to post more videos. I'm so excited for that. And he said he's going to say as well when she's going to be playing. So, you know, these are just simple blessings, right? But uh, there are such lovely and wonderful things to look forward to in life. You know, what, it, what is that going to be for you, right? Anyway, Sagittarius, I'm liking the look of this month for you. Uh, it's very exciting as well with your Jupiter in Aries. So I wish you well with that. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 6th of April, we have a full moon in Virgo, Hastha Nakshatra, happening in your ninth house. So something to do with your guru or your teacher uh, or with your siblings or cousins or friends could be illuminated at this time and you're going to be shown the answers of what to do the, the insights the answers whatever it is that you need that could really be illuminated at this time as well that's on the 6th of april now there's a parivartana exchange between mars and mercury houses seven and five from 1st April to 10th May and this is going to be really interesting you can use this energy to really make a difference at work there's something where you could possibly make the work environment more comfortable for everyone and the other thing is that you offer very sharp insights at this time there's something about you being very insightful there's something about, yeah, you making a difference at work. And there is also this creativity at work here as well. There's something where you're getting insights, you're figuring things out. Maybe you find a creative way to make something happen faster or something like that. It's great energy. It's great energy to be innovative and creative with what you do. Uh, that could be at work but that just could be in life as well this is that kind of work smarter not harder type thing you'll you'll join those dots get those insights at this time now Jupiter is going to be in Aries for you in your fourth house from 22 April onwards through to May of next year a very long transit and oh my battery is flashing and the card is going to cut out so I'm just going to sort this out hi there Capricorn apologies I had to sort out the battery and the memory card and I've completely forgotten where I got up to I think I just talked you through your Parivartana exchange where you are figuring out ways to work smarter not harder we've got Jupiter and Aries for you moving across your fourth house this is from 22 April to 1st May next year uh, this is a good transit for you you might be renovating or improving your home in some way your spiritual side is massively going to expand at this time okay and you're going to learn so much this year and you will be able to put to use all these learnings you'll put them to use very productively in later years but this is a time I do believe where you're taking a lot in and you're going to grow this this can also be a time of sort of yeah inner riches uh, are growing due to this Jupiter in Aries but this might be something I might explore more in a breakout video but at a very high level uh, I am seeing something expanding in regarding to home and definitely your spiritual side you're going to grow leaps and bounds it's going to be great now 20th April new moon Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your fourth house so it's a great time for you to cozy up at home uh, as for planting a seed we've got a new moon here so you can wish for something you can wish for something for your family and that can be healing for your family this is Ashwini Nakshatra you can wish for some healing for your family we can wish for something regarding your home you know anything that enhances comfort and beauty and it's funny I was when I was putting your notes together I was thinking about um, you could wish for a new car because it is the fourth house here you can plant a seed for a new car and I tell you what 
I do at my mum's place she's got a nice car and I miss the car because here I don't have a car <laughs> and it's like but you know what I did I bought a shopping trolley instead which has been fantastic I texted my friend I said to my friend um, I wanted to get an Audi TT but I got a shopping trolley instead <laughs> Oh, so funny. Yeah, and I told her as well that, well, that at least I'm on the vehicle ladder now, you know, so I'm going places. It's just a few more upgrades and I'll, I'll get to that nice car one day. I don't know. Anyway, Capricorn, I am excited for this month for you. What am I excited about? I'm excited about, do you know, a, a lot of this energy is really nice. There's a kind of, um, there's a bit of a quieter energy here too which is nice, especially that Jupiter in Aries, you know, because that's your fourth house. And that's the aspects are being cast on all the kind of moksha type houses. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a time of inner riches growing, definitely. All right, thank you so much, Capricorn. We are now gonna welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius ascendant aquarius moon or aquarius sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology now on the 6th of april we have got a full moon happening in virgo hasta nakshatra in your eighth house so hidden agendas will become clear to you on this day uh, there's a lot of moonlight and illuminating secrets this could be to do with your family actually if we're going to be specific about who and where I do think this could be to do with family could be to do with work as well but I'm gonna go for family here I've got the note here you could be more psychic at this time uh, it's a good time to carry a notebook as well now there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Mars and Mercury this is across your fifth and third houses from 1st April to 10th May so you could be very creative at this time uh, the other thing is that you've got the courage here. There'll be courage. Mars and Mercury are informing each other. So there's, there is a courage here. And there's an ability for you to speak up, to share your ideas, to be unique, and to not worry about the critics. Okay, there are critics everywhere. And actually, some critical comments are actually very helpful. I've had some uh, good critical comments over the years of doing this and they have impacted the way I do things on the channel. If it's good, if it's good criticism, I enjoy that and I like it. But when it's someone just being mean or putting you down, obviously that's horrible and I don't like that. But when it is some intelligent thing and that comment, that some, some comments can improve the content, I'm all for that. But it's kind of like here with this Mars Mercury um, exchange this is really quite good because you can creatively you can work like a bit of a machine at this time if you want to Mars Mercury can be a bit sort of engineering machine that kind of thing and this is the creative houses this is fifth house of creativity third house of courage also third house of mind speaking your mind right speaking third house you're speaking you're sharing got the note here get your work out publish hit launch do it make it happen now there's Jupiter in Aries in your third house this is from 22 April through to May of next year you're going to learn so much at this time and your mind is set to expand your social media platforms will definitely expand at this time you will have the courage and desire to share what's on your mind at this time. I'm really liking this energy. And that's just me looking at Jupiter from a very high level. I might do a deeper breakout video where I, I talk more in depth. So stay tuned for that. Uh, now on the 20th of April, there is a new moon, Aries Ashwini Nakshatra, happening in your third house. So you could be socializing at this time, which is really nice, Aquarius. If you haven't seen your friends for a while, this is the time to do it. So save some time, you know, the last third of April could be a really lovely time to meet with friends, to be social, to, to get out of the house, do something different, you know. Uh, great time to wish for healings in your friendship circle or with your siblings. So that's 20th April, new moon. We've got a new moon, you can plant a seed, right? And the best way to plant a seed is visualize 
the thing happening what you want. So visualize yourself laughing with your friends, having a great time. Um, visualize your siblings, you getting on with them. And perhaps you're wishing to meet members of your soul tribe. Call them in, Aquarius, you know, wish for those strong soul connections to come in. And this is a really good time. April is a great time for that because Saturn has moved into Aquarius now, right? That's your, it's your sign. And, uh, and, and Saturn across the whole world has been shaking everything up. And I have been seeing big movements happening for people due to this Saturn in Aquarius. You know, uh, I've, yeah, people who I know who've lived, you know, on the same street, they're now moving and things like that. And, and all of this change is happening in people's lives. So this is a real time where people are being moved about and redistributed. And some of your soul tribe people call them in this is the time now you know you got to be with your people so some of the shake-up might have brought some of your people closer to you so definitely try to uh, try to put some wish that you you know that it be made easy and that you get to connect with your people all right Aquarius thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for tuning in and this is Pisces ascendant Pisces moon or Pisces sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now on the 6th of April we have got a full moon in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra happening in your seventh house so at this time you might see your partner in a new light uh, or your love life in a new light okay if you are single and you're not seeing anyone but there's something about your love life that you're going to see it in a new way and I'm pretty sure we do have Mercury in the house as well. Let me just double check that, 6th of April. I want to double check. No, Mercury is nearby. I was close. Mercury is part of the new moon. That's what I was thinking about. But there's something about, when I was putting the notes together for this, there's something about you're, you're looking at your partner in a new way. Something is illuminated. You get some deeper understanding about something. I've got the note here. This is interesting. I'll just read this out. Even though Mercury is not there, but it doesn't matter. This has been written for some reason. So I've got here, be careful not to be too critical. Remember to soften your gaze with some heart energy. This was something I learned from a lady that I trained with. I trained with her personally in California uh, at Monterey, beautiful white sandy beach. And I learned from her a lot of energy medicine type things. And one of the things she explained was that when you're looking at, especially someone, she explains, yes, you're using, you know, possibly your third eye or your mind or whatever it is. She says, but use, bring your heart energy and she kind of drew a bit of a triangle with her um, fingers and she was explaining that you want the heart to be looking as well. And I don't know why, but this is, and I remember thinking about that as I was putting these notes together. Somebody needs that. I don't know why, but th that's that's there. So, and I think, you know, it's Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra, it's Virgo. I mean, Virgo is lauded by Mercury. That's probably why I was thinking quite a bit about Mercury as well. Uh, Mercury is in, I'm having a look at the six here now, Mercury is in Aries. So, but yes, it, it's, it's an interesting one. There's something about you seeing your partner in a new light and try not to be too critical. Okay, that's, that's needed by someone out there. Now there's a Parivartana exchange between Mars and Mercury. This is happening for you between your fourth and second houses from 1st of April to the 10th of May. This is a great time to structure your finances in support of creating your dream home or moving to your dream home or something to do with structuring finances so that it improves where you live or it takes you closer to you moving to that dream place where you want to live or, or whatever that is. Um, I've got the note here, how can you be clever with money to fund a renovation or to move or to create a deposit for a place that you want to uh, you know eventually buy that kind of thing okay so it's just nice energy here for that type of thing and don't forget improvements to the home can just be you know if you're living with your parents and you just have your room 
Uh, for many years, I did flat share and I just had my tiny little room. But I treated that as my house, you know, and I would buy beautiful cushions and lamps and candles. And, you know, it was always wherever I have been, it's always been a palace in my mind, right? So, and it might not look like that at all. And I've stayed in some pretty terrible places uh, when I was doing flat share. But in my mind, it was my little palace always. So, yeah. Uh, now Jupiter in Aries in your second house is going to Jupiter in Aries is going to transit your second house from 22nd April through to May next year. This is a very long transit. I might cover it in a breakout video, uh, but from a very high level perspective, your savings and finances are set to expand at this time. You will likely be required to work quite a lot as well. Uh, and I've got the note here, don't worry if you lose a job because it's very likely a better one is going to come along and replace it. Now there is a new moon happening on the 20th of April, Aries Ashwini Nakshatra. For you it's happening in your second house. So you might be busy with family at this time. But regardless, this is a really good time to just carve out a little bit of time for yourself, maybe even just five or ten minutes where you visualize what you want to have happen next. This is a new moon so you can plant a seed. So it's a great time to wish for the big money to come in, right? Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, or for a healing for yourself and your family lines. You know, both your mother's line, your father's line, if you have children, wish for a healing for your children. Uh, all, all the different lines that you are connected in with, wish for a healing. And that would be a great thing to do. And the the way to plant that seed, this is one of the ways I like to use, it is just to visualize it happening. So, and, and feel the feel good feelings while you're visualizing that. And that's on the 20th of April, new moon. It doesn't have to take long, five minutes is all you need. But Pisces, that is your month ahead. And to anyone who has been watching the entire episode, uh, to anyone who is here, thank you so much for watching. I love this community so much. This is so much fun. And it's so cool to be able to come back here and keep doing my work, to keep doing this work that I want to do, you know. And um, yeah, I'm just back here and, and enjoying it. And it, you know, it does feel different being back. I didn't think it would. I'll just indulge and chat about what it's like being back because now I've finished all my work. But yeah, it's been pretty amazing coming back because I did do videos here in 2018, 2019. If you go back on the channel, you'll see, uh, I might even reveal there's an old playlist of me dedicating a song to each sign. I might bring that playlist back. But when I did videos here before and now I've come back and it's kind of like I was thinking when I was flying back in that I'd probably feel like I never left. And I, I was thinking, I'll probably wake up. It'll be like that scene in Trading Places. You know where, what's his name? The Dan Aykroyd character, I've forgotten, Winthorpe. And he wakes up and he goes, oh, it was just a dream. And I thought, that'll be me. I'll just wake up in my same bed and I'll wake up and I'll go, oh, the last three years of me being in Sydney, it was just a dream. It was like I never left. That's what I thought was going to happen. And that did not happen at all. I came back here and I felt like felt like I'm a different person. I think I am. And I, and I felt like I felt like I was stepping into someone else's home. And I was thinking, I like who was here before, but I'm quite different to her. You know, it, 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 it has been a little bit bizarre. Like when you leave your place, I've never done this before. That's the other thing, I've never had this experience before, leaving a place that I've known for so many years and lived in for so many years, and then leave it for three years and then come back. And what I wasn't expecting was that I would have changed because the place physically is exactly the same, exactly as I left it. But me, I changed. I didn't know that I had. And when you come back, it's like, oh, wow, I'm different. I'm someone else. It's just bizarre. But see, I can tell you that, Pisces, because you're Pisces, you'll understand this. <laughs> you know, it's like you'll have some some energies within you where it's like, yeah, this this will be something that is probably right up your street. Because Pisces can be, um, well, the all is one, you know, and it is that familiarity. It's that, you know, 
I was here but I'm there and now and past and future and but it's all one in Pisces it's all weird isn't it it's like oh but yeah no I love Piscean energy anyway guys I just wanted to thank you for you know being part of this community the reason I do this work is for you the viewer you who's tuning in I know at this point in the video not many people are watching but those of you who are here thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time.